um, this is one of the uh, one of the most common mistake the baseball player will make when they play softball. You are not allowed to leave the base after the pitcher is preparing to deliver the pitches. Unlike baseball, you know, if you watch baseball, the, the, the pitcher would go like that to check if the runners are still on the bases or if they're too far off. Right in baseball, I mean in softball, no need to do that because they have to stand right there until you deliver the pitch. All right, so that's one of the major difference. So. Um, I am not an artist, so I'm just. This is a very rough schematic diagram of the field. So um, this is where you'll be playing the, uh, the diamond or the pitch. So this is the home base. This is the first base. This is the second base. This is the third base. All right. So there will be two teams. Each team will have at least nine persons. All right, nine person per team and each of the teams will take turns to be on the offense and also the defense. So they alternate. The aim of the offending the uh, team on the offense is to get as many runs as they can. That's the scoring, that's the unit of scoring in, in baseball or softball. You try to get runs. All right? And the aim of the defending team is to get three outs per inning. So after you get three outs, that, uh, that offending session is over, and then they switch. All right? So after the defending team get three outs, that stops that inning, and then they switch sides. And it's always, so that's what, it's always in pairs. They each time playing offense and defense until time run outs or the innings, or the uh, number of innings. Usually in Hall, you'll only be playing two to three innings because most of the it depends on the skill level of the teams, if, um, especially the pitcher. If the pitcher cannot run the game, so to speak, then of course the innings will be longer because there will be a lot of things going on and nobody can get any out or nobody can touch the ball. There will be a lot of errors and all the innings has to drag on. But it, at higher levels, usually each innings is relatively fast and um, you could usually play five to seven innings at higher levels. If you guys are interested in continuing to play up in the hall or afterwards, so that's around. Inter Hall usually is around two to three innings, all right. And if it's Inter Hall, the uh, semi, semi, um, semi-finals, finals usually they can play up to three to five innings, all right. And um, in Inter Hall, I don't know if they change the rules. Each, each game is around one hour or ten, one hour twenty minutes. This is for the full games, and for the uh, for after you get into the playoffs. So after you get into the semi-finals. It's around 2 hours, 10 minutes, 2 hours, 20 minutes for a game. After the time is reached, then the umpire will announce last inning. They complete the offense and the defense, so they complete that inning, both top and the bottom, and then the game ends, okay? Unless, of course, if the team uh, on the bottom, which means if they go on the offense later, is already leading by the point when they change inning, then of course the game just stops if they're just playing for a win or loss if they don't need to calculate the scores. You get it. Well, that was draw. Okay, um, we'll get to that later. <laughs> Good question, though. Um, so this is what the scoreboard is going to be like for the um, for the uh, softballs. So you will have different innings. So first inning, second inning, third inning, fourth inning, fifth inning, so on and so forth. The most innings I've ever played in Inter Hall in my first experience is nine innings. At Lung Ho. That was Lung Ho's catcher, and we were playing Sky in the, I think that was the third fight. We tied at fifth inning, and then we continued to play until ninth inning with tiebreaker rules. That was the longest in Hong and that ran for three hours. So, for example, to, uh, let's just say um, tomorrow, if we play, we'll play against Wyland, right? Friendly, so if we, let's say, this is called the top, this is called the bottom, okay? If you're betting, if you're um, on the offense team, or, the, or if you're betting at the top, that means you offense first, and then you defend afterwards. So suppose tomorrow we play on the bottom, we bet on the bottom. So which means they will still the offense first. Suppose like if the first inning they get one score and then we get three outs, and then at the bottom they, they uh, we get one score back, and then second inning is two, and then let's say we get three here. All right. So at the third inning, if we are able to stop them from getting any runs at all, and it's already time, so then the game will stop, right? Because there's no way we will have less score than them if we complete this inning. All right, that's what that's what it means by what 
uh, those like if you guys have played that watch baseball before, that's like a walk off home run. That's why that happens. With or if like if they get one already, so it's four against four now. So if the time already run out, then even if we get one score, like the guy at bat just suddenly get a fuck off home run, then the game immediately ends because that is already enough to secure the game. All right. So that is how you read the scoreboard. In baseball, and what the what at uh, like the top, the bottom, offend, defend, run, outs. What else? All right. All right. So um, back to the field. So uh, game on the offense is relatively simple. That simple. There's nine bets in the betting orders. You cannot bet out of orders. So if your order is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then you have to go in that order. And then let's say if he bets first, he got save on here, and then that the guy go bad, and then that guy is also on third, and then that guy got out, and then it's left, etc. You keep going along this order. Okay. So that's offense. For defense, um, there are different names for the different fielders. All right, so there's nine persons. There's no strict rules dictating where each person has to stand other than the pitcher and the catcher, okay? So technically, you can have the pitcher here, the catcher here, that is, um, because the rules say that the pitcher has to be in the pitcher's mouth and the catcher has to be in the, in the, in the catcher's box, okay? But there's no, um, Rule saying where the other person has to stand. So technically, you can have all the other seven guys at the outfield, all the other seven guys at the infield. That is allowed by the rules, but nobody's going to do that because that's very stupid in terms of defense strategy. Okay? Um, so usually, pitcher, catcher, and then there will be the first baseman here, first baseman. Usually, the second baseman stands between the first and the second base. This is what we call the second baseman. And then the third baseman usually is around here in front of you. Get, you you can visualize the field, right? Okay. So the third baseman is around here, and then that's what we call the short stop between the third, the the second and the third base. This is the short stop, and then we have the left outfielder, center center fielder, and right fielder. Left and right is from the catcher's position. The catcher's left is left. So that's why when you are, if you're actually standing at the field, looking back towards the catcher, if you say left fielder, go towards your right, that means that's actually addressing you, left fielder, even though you are the right, most right side guy from your view, okay? Everything is from the catcher's point of view. He's, this guy is the commander of the entire field because he's the only one that sees everyone, okay? And um, that's, so, the point of the defense during the uh, when your team is on the defense, what you do is you try to get three outs without letting the other guys get any runs or let them have as few runs as possible while you get the three outs. Okay, and obviously on the offending side, you try to get as many runs as you can before you get three outs. Okay, so how what is a run and what is an out? For run, basically. This is you, okay? Basically, uh, each batter has to face the field during his turn at bat. And the um, mentality is that the bases are the only thing that you can protect you once you're out there, okay? The, pitch, the pitcher will deliver the ball to you. You will try to hit the ball. If the ball gets out into the field, what we call the ball in play. That is when you can try to go on the next base. Okay? The ball comes at you, you swing at it, if you hit it, the ball goes in play. And then you can attempt to go on to the base. Alright, that is the basic mentality. And if you are legally touching a base, then you're safe. Okay, you are safe as long as you are legally on the base or touching a base. Any part of your body can touch a base. It doesn't matter. Okay, if you're long enough, you can use your penis to touch the base. But anyway, any part of the body, even your pinky fingers, whatever. Okay, touching the base, then you're safe. So the point is, you try to hit the ball without getting out and getting on the base. That is the aim of the batter. And once you're on the base, while your teammates is batting, you try to keep advancing along the base and eventually come back home. If you Come back to the home base safely. That is 
you have to come here, here, here. You actually have to touch all the bases in sequence first, and then come back home safety. Okay? Not on this. Of course, not on the same. Like you don't have to hit the ball and then run all four bases at the same pace. If you're safe on the base, then your teammates can push you and try to advance you. Okay? If you get back to the home base safety, safely, then you score a run. Okay? That is one run. Okay, so what is not safe? So you have to know what is out before you know what is safe, right? So getting safely on the base means you don't get out before you get on the base. So there are different types of outs. The simplest one is called a fly out. So it's kind of like the rules of dodgeball. If the ball, after it hits off your bat, get grabbed in midair. So basically, if any of the fielders, any of the defending fielders, grab the ball in the air before it touches the ground, that's an out. Okay, it doesn't matter how far you hit the ball, as long as it's not as long as it's in what we call the play area. The play area is between those two foul lines and also in front of the home uh, home run line. This is called the area in play. If any fielder catches the ball in room in air before it touches the ground in the area of play, then it's a fly out. You get out immediately. It doesn't matter how far you ran. Even if you hit the ball ten story high, you ran all the way back home first. But then he grabbed the ball in there and that's still enough. You don't get the score. Alright? So any balls before touching the ground, grab it, fly out. The other um, type of out is called a tag out. Okay? Tag out is if the ball is in control, in control of any of the fielders. So I'm holding the ball. You hit the ball, let's say you hit the ball, it bounces on the ground once and then the uh, first baseman can pulls it. But because it bounces on the ground already, that, that's not a fly out, right? Because it touches the ground, so the ball is in play. I grab it, and then you're running towards me, right? And then you're just next to me. If I grab the ball in my glove, you're not touching my base, and I tag you. That's an out. That's called a tag out, okay? Basically, if the fielder with the control of the ball, and then he tags you while you're not protected by a base, that's an out. Tag out. But if you have already reached the first base and you're already any part of your body is touching the first base or if you're already like safe, like second base, third base is also applied. If you're holding on if he's holding on to the ball, you're standing on the base, he tags you, that's safe. You're protected by the base. Okay, that's the concept of tap out. He has to tag you with the ball in his left hands while you're not touching the base. Okay? And um, okay, this is uh, just a little bit more of a concept of rewind things. If this, this, let's pretend this pen is the ball, this is my, um, I'm right-handed, so I wear my mitts on my left hand. If I'm holding the ball like this, and then I tag him, he's not on the base, he's out, all right? If it's too fast, the ball, when I fumble it, I grab it with my right hand, and then I tag him with the ball, and it's still an out, okay? But if I'm holding that ball with my hand like this, and then I tag him with the glove, that's a false tag, he's safe. And you can get a warning with that, okay? So just, just, to be aware, you have to actually touch him with the hand that is holding the ball. Either this or this. Usually it's this. Yes? If the guy in front of you is just home base, when you hit a fly out, does it count? And um, we'll talk about that rule later. Uh, we'll talk about all the fly balls scenarios later. But in short, no. Unless you tag up. I'll talk about that later. Remind me if I forget. Okay? We'll just talk about all the answers. I don't want to get like too confusing. So let's attack out. Get applies at any time, okay? No matter if you have to run or not have to run. For example, if you're on the second base, he hit the ball to the shortstop, shortstop grabs the ball, and then he looks behind you, oh shit, you're just standing behind him, swing his glove and then just hit you. That's also an out because you're between the two bases, you're not protected by base, he grabs the ball, he tag you. Okay, so tag out all applies in that case. The other scenario is force out. Force out occurs if you are a force runner. So that is that way. This is another concept. Is whether as a runner, if you're a force runner or if you're not a force runner. Okay. What a force runner means? It means that you must run. You do not have the option of staying at the base. Okay. A better runner is always a force. Better runner means the person at bat. After he gets the ball into play, then he's the better runner. 
Okay, if he that's the ball, he must run to first base because he does not have the option of staying at the home base, right? You can just stand there, hit the ball, he grabs it, and then they just stand here touching the home base, and then this guy cannot bat, right? So better runner is always the first runner. Okay, and let's say if the scenario is man on first, and then there's a better runner. If I'm the better runner, Albert is the first baseman. I hit the ball into play. Does he have to run? Yeah. Is he forced to run? Yes, because if he does some fuck off, I do not have a place to go to, right? If he stands on the first base, I cannot go to first base. He's on my base, okay? So he's a forced runner. He must go to the second base, okay? Now, what if instead of that, Albert is on second base, I'm better runner. I hit the ball. Does he have to run? No, not necessarily, right? He has the option of staying at second base. Correct? So he is not a false runner. He can choose to stay. But I am a false runner. I cannot have the option of staying at the home base. Okay? First scenario. Two guys. I'm the better runner. There's a first base runner, second base runner. Are they false runners? Yeah. Yes, because if this guy doesn't run, I cannot go to first base. If this guy doesn't run, we cannot go to second base. So all of us, all three of us are false runners. Okay? What if Man on first and third. Is this false runner? First. Yes. This guy is false runner. This guy is not. This guy must attempt second base if the ball is fair and in play. But um, this guy has the option of staying. Okay. He can risk getting caught and try to advance home and leave the safety of third base, or he can choose to stay if he so wishes. Okay. So you guys get the concept of false runner now. False run or false runner. Okay, so what is a false out? A false out is only um, in play, in force, if there's a false runner. Okay, so it's always in force against the better runner, but against those on the base, you have, it depends on the situation. If the ball reaches a fielder's hand, and the fielder is touching a base that a false runner is attempting before the runner gets there, then the, um, the fielder do not have to tag, tag the runner and the runner is out, okay? Most commonly the scenario is first baseman, I'm the first baseman, he hit the ball, all right? He's running towards first base, right? He tried to touch the base before I tag him or he gets out, right? But if, let's say this is the ball, you throw it to me, if like he's running, I'm on the first base, my leg is touching the first base, and then he throw it at me, I grab the ball. If I grab the ball and touch the base before he can touch the base, then he's out. I do not have to do attack. Okay? And I do not have to risk getting the ball out of my hands when he rushes over. Same applies. If man on first, and the second base runner is here, okay? If the ball hits, bounces on the ground, and then go to the second baseman, the shortstop is very quick, he went here already. Second baseman tossed the shortstop the ball, the shortstop grabs it, step on the second base. Before this guy can get to second base, this guy is out. Okay, then he does not have to tag him. Okay, why do you want to do a force out instead of a tag out if you're a runner? If you can do a force out, unless there's not enough time, like, unless you're here, you do, you do not have time to touch the base because the guy is just next to you. All right, then of course you try to tag, but if you have time, you should always do a force out over a tag out. Why? It's faster. First of all, it's faster because I don't have to grab the ball and touch it at the same time. If I'm already around the base, part of that can be done like before you even grab the ball, right? You always see in the baseball game, the first baseman is always like that and you're waiting for the ball, right? Okay, it's faster. And the second thing is, it's less risky. Okay, both because it's less risky to uh, injury, you, there's less risk of injury when he bumps into you. And the second thing is if he bumps in, remember when I said you always have to touch him with your gloved hand holding the ball, or the other hand but you have to hold the ball, right? You always have to touch with the hand holding the ball. If he runs into you and you tag him, and then the ball pops out of your hand, it's a safe. Because the ball is no longer in your control. Okay, the concept of the ball being in control of the field is a very important concept in softball. If after you tag him, the ball is not in your control, then that's a safe. Actually, same thing applies to a fly ball. If the ball is very high, very high, very high, you appears to grab it, but then it fumbles, 
then that's also a save. Okay? Just holding it for a brief second doesn't constitute enough. You have to control the ball after you finish the entire action sequence. Okay? So that's why if you can do a force out, don't do a tear out. That's why in a game, usually if it's a force play, and then that guy suddenly panic, he grabs the ball, punches the base, and then attempt to tear, he's going to get fucked by everybody. Okay? Because he risks turning it out into a fumble. Okay? So that is. Those three methods are uh, the uh, most common methods for a fielder to get an out. Of course, there are four common uh, there are four common methods of getting out in baseball or softball. What's the last one? Mm -hmm. Strike out. Okay. So these all applies when the ball goes into the field, right? When the ball is in play. This one, when you are the batter, is always a battle of you and the pitcher at first, and then you battle the field after you hit the ball. Okay. A batter, a pitcher's job is to try to either give you free strike without you getting a good ball in play, or to make you hit so that um, the fielders can easily handle it. All right. A good pitcher doesn't always have to strike out all of the batters. If you can make it so that you can only hit those very, very slow balls along the ground or very, very easy to catch fly ball, that's already a very good pitcher. Okay? But when the pitcher is pitching at the batter, there's a thing what we call the pitching count. Okay? Usually it's like this. It's kind of like that. Ball and strikes. Alright? If a strike is if the batter cannot hit the ball, or if he hit the ball, but it's a foul ball. Okay? That means he cannot hit the ball into play. Into play means between the foul lines. Okay? So if the batter cannot hit the ball into play, that's the strike. If the, if the pitcher deliver a pitch within the strike zone, but the batter did not attempt to swing, that is also a strike. Okay, because he pitches a pitch that you're supposed to swing at, but you didn't swing, so that's a strike. A ball is if the pitcher deliver a pitch that is outside of the strike zone, and the batter could resist the temptation to swing, so he didn't swing at that ball. Okay, that is called a ball. Okay. So, um, what happens is, and if there is, if there are a total of three strikes on the same batter at the same batting, then you get out immediately, you get struck out. Okay, on the last strike, you get out. That's one out, and then the next batter takes the place. On the other hand, if there are four balls, then the batter is entitled to automatically go on to the first base. He can walk there as slow as he wants. He's not in danger of getting out. If there's any false runner at first base, goes to, that guy goes to second base. If there's any false runner at second base, go to third base, so on and so forth. Okay? So if all bases are loaded, loaded bases means there is a runner safe at first, second, and third base. In that case, if there is a ball, then the batter goes on first, first goes to second, second goes to third, third goes home, and that's a run. Okay? So this is called the pitching count. It doesn't have to be consecutive. So they will have, like, if the first pitch is a strike, so there's one strike. And then if the second is a ball, so one ball, one strike. And then the third is a ball, two ball, one strike. And then the pitcher gives a strike, two ball, two strikes. And then the other one is a ball, three ball, two strikes. And then on the last one, the batter did this, uh, did this way, had a good pitch, like, uh, strike ball. So um, that one is. Four. Four orientations that you can do. So yes. oh, yeah. Sorry, it's it very nice time. meeting you. So um, in that case, it was still be out. Free ball, free strike, strike out. Okay. So um, what is the strike zone? So um, basically, the strike zone is whatever the umpire calls the strike is a strike. Okay. Do not argue with the umpire. Don't even if it's like way over your head, and then he call a strike. It's useless to argue on the field, okay? And you cannot argue any judgment. You cannot contest a judgment cause. You can contest them 
if you think that it's a it's a the rules, but of course that's usually the team captain or the manager's job. But one of the things I hate the most is don't argue with the umpire on the field. It's useless. He's not going to change his decision. You're just going to piss him off, and he's call, going to call the next two strikes as balls. Okay, or the next two balls as strike. Don't piss the umpire off on the field. Okay. And um, but just to have an idea of the strike zone, a strike zone is like the plate is a pentagon on the edge of the diamond, right? So it's a pentagon, I think. So any on the um, horizontal side, if the ball passes over the plate, if and basically if there's a little bit of variation in between the interpretation, it's also between different editions of the rules. Some say any part of the ball touches the base, like if the shadow falls over it, then it's already a strike. Some say half of the ball has to be over. But anyway, the rough idea is if is the ball passes over the plate. Okay, that's a strike in terms of the horizontal distance. For the vertical distance, usually um, uh, a rough idea is there's a very, very um, wordy version, like um, uh, the upper boundary is the midpoint between the uh, uh, armpit and the belt, and then the lower boundary is etc. etc. Basically, it's between the nipple and your knee. Okay, it's around the area of your nipple and your knee. Anything that passes over the nipple and your knee, while it's passing over the strike zone, like the, the base, then it's a strike. So even if you stand all the way at the back, and when the ball comes at you, it's already like at the level of your feet, it will only take the instance when it passes over the plate. Okay, so if it's a very droopy, droopy ball, and it's already at your feet at that, but because, because you're standing all the way at the back of the box, that's still a strike. Okay, it's not where you stand, it's when it passes through the plate, between your nipple and your knee. Okay? So um, that is your strike zone. Okay? So um, you get struck out if the uh, okay, so um, if you if you don't swing at the strike, that is a strike. Okay? If you swing at anything and that doesn't touch the ball, that is also a strike. So even if it's at way over your head, as long as you swing, that is still a strike. Okay? Makes sense, right? Because the pitcher got you to swing at something that you're not supposed to swing at, okay? Also, at the first two strike, if you hit a foul ball, which means you hit something outside of the foul lines, usually it's if the ball comes like it's a bit fast, and then you just glance at the ball instead of hitting it right on, so the ball sort of just like, and then go to the back, hit the net, whatever, or hit the audience, okay? That is also a strike at the first two, at the first two only. On the last strike, if you cut a foul, that actually doesn't count. You still want to strike. Okay, that's called a protection. Okay, on the last one only. On the last one only. Okay. Not looking at the ball, just a strike. Anything that is in the strike zone but you don't swing is a strike, right? Anything that you swing at but doesn't you don't touch is also a strike, right? Anything that you swing at, that you touch, but become a foul ball. It's a strike only on the first two strikes. Okay. So on the last strike, the pitcher actually has to either give you something in the strike zone that you do not swing at, or you actually have to completely miss the ball to get the strike out. Okay. On, if you're on two strike, if the pitcher pitches a ball to you, you glance it, it pops behind you, you do not get the first strike. Okay. You're still on the same count. That's called a protection. That, it, that basically, if you're on the two strikes, you're at E. If there's a ball that is quite close to the strike zone, you're not sure, you're encouraged to hit it anyway. Okay. At least get a protection, at least get a foul ball. Don't just stand there. Because if you're on strike two, yeah. basically the umpire tends to cause a bigger strike zone. Okay? So that's a strike out. Also, if, if you like have two strikes when you're, when you're on hold, and then you run and then you come back, you can do that. Then you, you, then you play, so, so you have like no strikes or, or you continue with No, you continue with the same count. Okay? This is called stealing. What he's talking about is stealing. If there's a runner on third, okay? This is one of the major dif difference between softball and baseball, okay? In baseball, as long as the pitcher is not like really actively trying to catch you, before you deliver the pitch, you can run as, as far off as you want, right? You can even stand there and then just wait for him to pitch and then you steal home. In softball, you're not allowed to do that. That's called. That's a rule called the double direction rules, or the intention to hit. 
if the catcher has the ball in control and give it back to the pitcher. If the pitcher has the ball in control, he is not really like looking around trying to throw the ball at, at anyone in particular. If the umpire determines that he is attempting to start his next pitch. If you're a runner, not on any base, you can only choose one direction and head there. So if you're in between, you either choose to try to attempt the next base or you go back to your previous one. Usually, unless you're like very, very far off, the decision is to go back to the previous one, okay? Which means if he's the, if he's the pitcher, maybe the catcher fumbles a little bit and then um, the third base runner went just here. And the catcher looks at him and then throws the ball back to the pitcher, okay? And then you can only choose to either go to the home base or go back to the third base. You cannot walk two steps to the home and then this guy throws it at the catcher. Of course, because you're going home, right? He's going to throw it at the catcher. And then you go back to the third base. You're not allowed to do that. Okay, if the pitcher is attempting to deliver the pitch, you choose one direction and stick with it. Okay, because the field of softball is actually much smaller. Along the same lines, you're not allowed to leave the base that you're touching until the ball leaves the pitcher's hand. Okay, so if you want to steal to the next base, you can, but you're not allowed to leave the base before he delivers the pitch. So usually he holds the ball like that, and then he throws the pitch, and then as soon as the ball leaves his hand, you can take a few steps, go back at the field and see if you want to steal or not. But you're not allowed to, like, he's a tapping pitch, and then you walk a few steps already, that's an out. Okay, that is called what's like that, leaving the base too early, that's an out. Okay, that's one of the difference between soft one baseball. You cannot leave the base before the ball leaves the pitcher's hand. And after the pitcher has the ball in control, you either go back or you go to the next one. You cannot do the dance. Okay? So that is a steal. But of course, if like the pitcher is and the catcher is like really daydreaming, you are on the second base, and then the catcher just like lobs the ball back to the pitcher without any alert to you then you can try to steal third base. Okay, you can do that. You can even steal home. Okay, but usually if the catcher is even halfway competent, it's very difficult to steal home. But of course in Intel, everything can happen. <laughs> okay, so that is the rules for taking a lead. That, this is called taking a lead, by the way. It's before the better hit the ball, you already take a little bit of lead off the base because you don't know where the ball will go. If you take the lead, then it's easier for you to go to the next base if you choose to. Of course, if you're forced run, then of course you will take your back lead anyway, because if the ball hits the ground, you have to run. Okay? So this is about running. And um, going back to the fly ball rule, pack up. So um, when the ball leaves the pitcher's hand, you can leave the base, right? So what happens if there's a 10-story high fly ball? Because if my team is already down by, let's say, one run, and I'm the last matter, there's two outs already, we're playing on the bottom. So my strategy, of course, if there's a guy on the third base, I would hit a ball that is as high as possible. Then even if I get out, as long as he is home, then we at least tie the game, right? That's not allowed. Okay, so that is this rule is exactly to prevent this from happening. So basically, the concept of softball is you can get a run only on the opponent's error, or if you make, or if you hit the ball, then I hit a um, solid, safe ball. Okay. So the rules of softball does not encourage you getting a run on and out. Of course, there's sacrifice, but of course that is a deliberately sacrifice, not a 10-story high fly ball that you just happen to luckily get. The take-up rule is that if there is, if this is a fly ball, after it's caught or after the ball touches the fielder's hands, you have to touch the previous base before you can attempt the next one. It means that if I'm standing here and there's a 10-story high fly ball, caught by the left fielder, I have to go back to third base, touch the third base before I can go to home. Okay? So if, like what, in case of if, let's say it's not two outs, it's only one out, so like, uh, one out, okay? So if this ball is really, really crucial and I'm doing a sacrifice fly ball, 
then if I am the runner, I would not be taking such a big, that big of a lead. If I know it's going to be a sacrifice fly ball, what I would actually be doing is I would stand right there on the third base, not touching the base, not leaving it. And then if the ball is like 10 story high and just caught by the left fielder, I leave the base the moment he caught the ball and then go, go for the home base. Because when he catch the ball, I have to touch third base before I can attempt home because of the tag up rules, right? This is to prevent the runners getting a run on a fly ball, okay? Otherwise, if it's man on one, first, second, and third, I just hit a 10 story high fly ball, this guy gone out and everybody is already home by the time the builder caught the ball. That's not supposed to happen, okay? So, in that case, when the fielder catch a fly ball, all the Runners have to go back to the base they were at, touch it before they can advance to the next one. Or they can be on their old, uh, previous base and they attempt the run after the fly ball is called. Okay? So that's why if there's a 10 story high fly ball, everyone is cheering, you would, but usually the runner would just be standing there. Okay? It's not a good thing to hit a 10 story high fly ball. Because usually, there's probably not, you won't, you won't get everybody back. Yeah. Okay, unless of course it's a home run. Okay, so that is basically the most common methods of getting an out and also getting runs. All right. Of course, just to complete the story, there's this thing called a home run. Home run is if the batter hit the ball over the home run line, as defined by that field. There's different difficulties. The home run line in Stanley Hall is around this more or less uh, medium distance in Hong Kong. The one in King Kong Road, uh, one of the uh, higher end uh, fields is a bit higher because actually I can hit over a certain line on the net. So that is a home run. And also uh, the one in the second main field is actually much um, closer. So as long as you hit it over the equivalent of the midway of the outfield in our field, then it's already a home run. So it depends on the field. The home run line. But if you hit it, hit the ball over the home run line without getting fly, without getting fly, that is a home run. You get to go back to your home base immediately, and everybody in front of you also gets a run. So if there's two persons on base, you hit a home run, that is a three runs home run. If the bases are loaded, there's a four runs home run, or also for the grand slam. Okay, so that is a home run. The fielder getting the ball outside the home run line does not nullify your home run. If they're standing behind the home run line when they catch the ball, you still get your home runs. But if they're in front of the home run line and then they jump out to grab it, that's an out. Whoa. It has been attempted before. That's usually those highlights plays in MLB. If you follow the MLB IG stories, then you will see those kind of plays. They yeah. grab they jump the ball. Yeah, they grab the breaches, pull themselves up, grab the ball, and then the entire body falls off, but that's still an out. Oh, so even if the catcher would they fall out of the home As long as the moment before they catch the ball, they're inside of you. Okay, okay. Okay, they take the moment. It, it's the same here, actually. There's, this is the infield line. There's also the foul lines behind here. This is the foul line. This is the infield lines. So any ball that is um, landed here is a foul ball, right? Like if the batter hits the ball that is here, that's a foul ball. So if he's on uh, no or one strike, he gets a strike. If it's on two strike already, then it's the same times, but then the pitcher pitches again. All right, but if it's a fly ball here, and then the like the the the, the, the left field come here and grab it in air, if it's between the this is called the uh, play line and the foul line, it's still a fly out. It's still a fly out. If he catches a foul a fly ball here, it's still a fly out. But if the ball is here and then the fielder catch it, that's a foul ball. Okay. If the fielder is here, jumps up, grab the ball, and then land in the other play area, that's still a fly out. It's the same handling as with a home run, so that's a little bit advanced. Alright, so the, 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 the gist of the story is you should always catch the ball if you can. It doesn't matter if it's a foul ball, it's going to be a foul ball anyway, but if you catch it, then that's an out. And out is not easy to get at the hall level. Alright, at the hall level. Okay, so um, most of the time in New York depends on your pitcher. If your pitcher is competent, then there will be a lot of strikeouts or the other kinds. 
Okay, it depends on the relative batting and also the uh, fielding abilities of the team. If the pitcher cannot even give a strike, then of course they will be walk, 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 but then everybody will walk back to the home base and you basically just grab the bat and then stand there and then you can go to first base. Uh, okay. And when does, the, when does the pitcher change? The, uh, the pitcher changes whenever the team wants to change the pitch. Oh. It doesn't, there's no set amount of thing, but of course uh, in MLB they have starting pitcher uh, and then relieving and then closing because it's very exhausting at MLB level. We have to use a lot of force in Inter Hall, we usually do not have that luxury. We have one main pitcher and then the relieving and that's it. Okay, unless your team has like 20 something, 30 something people, then you can have four pitchers. But usually in our experience, we have one pitcher that is more stable and then we have one to relieve him if he gets fucked off, if he like cannot pitch. But it's very important because if the pitcher cannot deliver a pitch, a strike, then you actually cannot run a game. It's not fun for both the offending and the defending team. The other team will just stand there, wait for you to walk me in, but that's not fun at all, even though I'm winning 20 something against zero. Alright, so I, um, usually I don't need a pitcher to be good, but he at least needs to run the game. <laughs> so if the fielder cannot catch the ball, uh, at that spot is a foul. If the fielder cannot catch the ball, it's a foul ball. It's a foul ball, so it's uh, a strikeout. It's a strike if it's on the first two strike, but if it's but if it's two strike already, then it's they will con he will continue batting at the but same point. He can catch it. It's a fly out. Then it's a fly out. Then but it's also th it's not a strike out. It's, it's not, not a strike out. It's a fly out. Then he will be fly out. Next batter goes to the bat because that like if if I get if. If I get like, um, okay, let's say um, the pitcher is very good at pitching in the strike zone, but it's very fast, I cannot follow the timing of the ball. So first pitch, I foul it, okay, so that's strike one. Second pitch, I foul it, that's strike two. Third pitch, I also foul it, but then nobody catches it, okay, so that is still strike two, right, because on the last one, I'm, I, I can have protection, it's not a strike out. And then on the last one, I still foul it, but somebody catches it in mid there after I foul it. So I can fly out. Yeah. Okay, so there's one out on my team, and I go back to the dugout, dug out, and the next batter comes in on a clean count. Okay, a new batter always comes in on a clean count. So if there's three strike out, is it count as one out? Or no, no, no. Free strike is an out. Free out is an in. -in. Okay? Free strike equals to one out. That is a strike out. Free strike is one strike out. Free strike out, you finish the unit. Okay? It doesn't matter. It actually doesn't matter. You can have any combinations of those outs. As long as it totals to three outs, then the inning is changed. You can actually have all three of the same outs on the same inning. Okay, for example, um runner, runner. runner. I hit a fly ball, center field catches it, but those two guys didn't tag up, so they're in the middle of the bases. So center field cat throws the ball to soft stop, shot stop, tags this guy out, throw to second base, tag this guy out, you can actually get all three outs on the same inning in this manner. Okay, it has happened in this hobby before. It's called uh, 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 triple out or whatever. Triple kill, whatever. It has happened before. Usually, it, it, of course, uh, a certain ability of the defending team is needed to execute this, but usually it's not because of the, a very good defending team. It's usually due to very shitty runners. So, a double kill could be because of a very good, of a, a very fast, quick reacting defending team, but a triple kill is usually an error on the offending team's part. It's very difficult to get a triple team if everybody is doing everything they're supposed to be doing. Alright, so that's the gist. Any questions? Anything else you want to talk about? Dead ball. Oh, oh, dead ball is going to happen a lot. Dead ball is going to happen a lot, but it's not something that you can assume <laughs> or whatever. Okay, so um, remember when I say uh, one of the methods you can... Okay, so these are the methods of getting out. So there are different methods of getting on the base as well, okay? On getting on the base, of course the first one is you get a hit. A hit means you hit the ball into the play areas and the defending team cannot get you out before you get on first base. Okay, so that's a hit. A safe hit. Okay, that's the most basic. The second one is called 
a baby are based on dogs. Based on dogs, which means that pitcher delivers four balls, so you're entitled to a walk, or, or call a walk. Based on balls or walk, it's the same terms. Okay, it depends on the scoring system you use. Based, based on balls or walk. So basically, four balls, you're entitled to a walk. Okay, so that's the second method of going to the first way. The third method, which is not supposed to happen, but surprisingly happens a lot, is called a hit by pitch. Okay, hit by pitch. It means that the batter throws a ball and the ball hits you. You attempted to dodge, but you did not dodge it. Of course, you have to make an effort to dodge. You can't, like, if the ball is coming at you, you cannot, like, kick it and then, oh, you hit me. You cannot do that. If I'm at bat like this, the ball coming at me, I tried to dodge, but I couldn't dodge in time, the ball hit me, any part of my body, that is a hit by pitch, you go to first base directly. Okay? Wow. It's not something that you want to do, it's like, fuck. Well, of course, um, it should have like five less, of course, um, it depends on pitches usually. But at indoor level, if the pitch is not really that fast or strong, and the ball is coming at you, usually we encourage to try to dodge, but not dodge too well. <laughs> yeah. Like you dodge, but then somehow your feet got in the way, or you dodge, but your ass is too large, <laughs> something like that. Because in indoor, usually the pitch pitches doesn't hurt that much, and any, any walk is a walk. If my pitch is like basically the same as the wall, but you don't have to wait for all four balls because it hits you. Uh, does the pitcher have to like pitch all of the balls to, to the same batter, or can be any? No, no, no. If a new batter comes in, that he starts on a new count. Okay. The count always the count goes only with that batter and that inning. Okay. So and even if it's the same batter, if it changes inning, like right? if I am the fourth batter, yeah. there's already two outs. There's a guy on the base. But then this guy got too cocky, left the base, tried to steal, but that caught stealing. If the count is already two ball one strike, that's he got killed, right? That is the third out. So we change inning anyway. Okay? And then we are on the defense, we get the three outs, and then we come back to do the offense. I will still be at bat, right? Because I haven't completed my plate appearance yet. I'm still at bat. But then, this is last innings count. It got wiped, I start on the pin slate, no ball, no strike. Okay? So, the count only stays with that pattern for that attack, for that plate appearance. Okay? So, this is the different method of the out. One last thing, um, remember uh, when I say you have to actually be touching the base to be protected by the base. Okay? There's one single exception to this rule, is when a better runner attempts the first base. Okay? If you see the plate is actually inside the diamond for these two, but the first base is a little bit different if you have taken a look at the field. There is a bag outside like this, it's orange. So in addition to the white plates inside the field, there's an orange bag at the outside. Okay? You can actually overrun the first base and still be safe as long as you do not go into the field. This is because first base is the one that is usually the tightest with the most collision and most force outs happens here. We do not want all the better runner to slide at the first base when and break his legs. Okay, so for the first base, after I hit the ball, because on the first base there's actually not much reason to do a tag play unless the ball happens to be here you grab the ball and he's still, like if I grab the ball here and then he's right in front of me, of course I just hack him. I don't want to throw the ball and then do a transition and throw it at the back, right? So if the first baseman, if the ball is like a very, very slow one and then first baseman comes in, grab it and then runner is just a hit, then he can do the tag. But otherwise, there's actually not much reason to do tag play. Usually it's false play, right? A false out. Like if they hit it at the shortstop, shortstop throws at the first base, and first base is going to attack it, right? Because the first, the better runner is always a false runner. Okay? We do not want to have so much collision. So on the first attempt, only on the first pass, not first attempt, I mean, if you attempt and then it's a foul ball, you go back, you can still do that. But when a better runner is attempting first base from home, it's usually recommended to overshoot the base. If he touches the outer orange back E4, the first baseman gets a force out at the inner back, he's still safe. 
he cannot come out and tag you for overrunning. Okay, this is just one thing. That's why we say do not stop. Because usually we see a lot of people run, 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 and then basic and then and then stop on the first base. That is wrong. You slow down, you're gonna slow your steps, and you're gonna get it out. The usual the, the recommended thing to do is just to overrun it. Okay? This only applies on the first base and only when you attempt it from home. Okay? You cannot like run and then the ball is still fumbling around the midfield and then go back and then overrun it from that direction. That doesn't work. If you go into the field, you're fair game. Okay? This even applies if you overrun it, you're safe, and then you walk back in, in this direction. If you step inside the play area, step inside the foul line, you can be tagged. Okay? So that's why after you overrun it, the umpire call you safe, you walk back and touch the base outside the foul line. And then you step into the field while touching the back. And then you can touch the inner back. After you go into the field, the orange outer back cannot protect you anymore. Okay? The orange track only applies when you attempt the first base from home base as a better runner. Okay? You can overshoot it only when you do it on the first base. Like when you get after you get the save here, then your job is to go back into the inner base without going into the field. Don't do that. Okay? A lot of people get excited, they loop over and then the first base packet is out. Okay, so maybe also explain like the young people that follow the first bound to the Okay. Um okay, so um basically if the ball is in the infield then the determining of whether it's a hit, like a ball in play, or a fair ball, a fair ball means ball in play, or if it's a foul ball, that's the ball outside of play, is the final uh, destination of the ball, whether naturally or when it's touched by a fielder. Okay, if it's in the infield. For example, if the ball like is like a rolling, those kind of little, very small, uh, slow ball, and then roll, 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 and then it gets spin off the line itself, and then it's here. That is a foul ball, even if it touches inside. Because if the ball is inside the infield, whenever it stops naturally or picked up by a fielder, the final position determines whether it's fair or foul. Okay? So if I'm the catcher, I see it rolling like this, but the runner is right in here, I will let it roll up before I grab it. Because I want it to be a foul ball, I don't want it to be a fair ball so that you're safe on first, right? But on the other hand, if it rolls on the outside and then roll back into the field before it's grabbed by the fielders, that's a fair ball. Okay? Along the same reason, if it's a ball that is a little bit fast, hits the ball, hits the glove of the third baseman, and then bounces out, is this fair or foul? It's fair because at the last moment before it stops naturally or touch by the glove is fair. So because a defending player touches the ball in fair area, this is a fair ball. It's a ball you play. Okay? So that's a fair ball. On the other hand, if the ball reaches the outfield area, then it's the final position of the ball. It's when the ball first contact the field that determines whether it's a fair or foul. Like if it got hits to the outfield, it bounces here without being touched by anyone and then go out, this is a fair ball. Because it's in the outfield, the first instance lands in the fair area and then it goes out. Okay? On the other hand, if it flies over here, touches here and then roll back in, that's a foul ball. Okay? It's, this is a little bit confusing but this, in regards to fair or foul, there's a little bit different if it happens at infield or outfield. At outfield is when it first touches the ground, and infield is the final position before whether it stops or is touched by a fielding player. Okay? If it doesn't touch the ground at all before it reaches the foul line, it's a little bit hard, but it actually, uh, in, uh, in that point, it's um, what happens when it passes over the base. If it's one of those little 
ball with a spicy curve. If it like goes out, it's still in the air. It's here when it passes over the infield, but then curves out and then lands here. That's a fair ball. If it goes out, that passes on the outside in the foul side of the base and then curve back in and then land in the foul zone. Land here. That is a foul ball. It's a little bit strange and this uh, is the judgment clause of the chip umpire. But it's, it rarely comes into play and if it does, just listen to whatever this guy say. Okay. If the ball is outside of play from a fair area, so if like if the ball bounces once here and then it rolls all the way out, or if like I throw the ball, the builder caught it, but then fumbles and then throw it all the way here, he tries to throw it to a fair baseman, but he has a shitty throw, so he throws it in to the audience. Then everybody on the base gets to um, advance to the one they're attempting plus one more. Okay, so if I'm the back runner that's man on first, I'm already past the first base attempting second, and he's already past the second base attempting third. When he makes the fumble throw, then he gets to go home because he's attempting third plus one more. And I just go to third because I'm attempting second plus one more. Okay, so that is when the ball got thrown out of the building area, or of the playing area. All right. There's two more rules, but I'm not going to explain it today because I don't think it's easy to understand. Even if I ask some parents, they may not be able to explain it. So I'm just going to introduce the concept to you and I will talk about it in the games if I see, or in the fields if I see you guys later, okay? Yeah. You know what I want to talk about, right? Infield fly. One of them is infield fly and the other one is uncaught third strike, okay? So there are two special rules that is a little bit hard to understand. The first one is called the infield fly rule. You can Wikipedia or Google it if you're interested, but it's, it's, it's actually not that difficult, but you need to know how the game runs, okay? And the other one is called the uncaught threat strike. Samsung by say. Uncaught third strike. Or fumble third strike. Okay, those two are two special rules. It's, um, if it happens on the field without you knowing about it, you're going to be like, what the fuck is the empire doing? Is he on weed or something? But then it actually makes a lot of sense. It's very important, especially for a catcher. I, I demand all of the catchers to understand this because it's very um, important when he makes his decision, but I don't think you can try to ask the current to explain it to you and see if they see if they can. They know it and they being they being able to explain it to you are different, okay? But um yeah. Can you explain? No 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 no. no. <laughs> Alright. Okay, yeah. So those are like after you know these two and then everything, basically you have the basic of the games. But of course um the fastest way to learn is either to watch uh, some games. Yeah, um, it can be the internal games, but those you, causes more confusions than answers. Sometimes this is like, uh, is he supposed to be doing that? But um, or you can watch MLB, and the other method is you play the game. MLB, that's this PlayStation games. It's actually quite good for understanding the game because you actually have to push the buttons for the guys to do something. They don't just catch the ball and throw it to a base automatically. You have to ask them to throw it. Which, but of course, the rules for software and baseball are a little bit different. So keep that in mind when you watch MLB. Because sometimes it's like sometimes that they something that they do we would never do and vice versa. One last thing. Other than swinging at the um, pitches, like when you have bat, you can try to swing. So there are two decisions you can do, right? You can when the ball comes in, you can either judge that it's a strike and then you try to swing for it, or you judge that it's a ball and you don't do anything and let it pass, right? So that's the two basic things. Of course, you can judge that it's a dead ball and then try to dodge. Okay, so those are the basic things. There's one more action that you can do. It's called a bunt. Okay, bunt is basically a hit, but it's usually used for more strategic reasons. Okay, there are different types of bunts. 
some people will tell you that when you do a bunch, um, you already, you automatically, like, um, you think that you're out already, you just try to advance the runner. So basically, you sacrifice yourself to get the guys on the base to advance. But um, actually, that's not the only use of the buns. There's something called buns and runs, hit and runs, strategic buns, short buns, whatever. So a bun does not necessarily equate to sacrifice. But what it is, is a bun is usually is the ball comes, you swing at it and try to hit it, right? A bun is the ball comes, your bat is already there and you wait for the ball to come. So basically, you're using the bat like a glove to try to grab, like try to stop the ball. Okay, usually if this is a ball, okay, I'm not gonna really swing. If you throw it at me and then I swing it, this is a swing, right? Because I attempt to throw this ball. On the other hand, if he pitches and then I wait for it here, I just hold it and then I wait for the ball to hit the thing. I wait for the ball to hit my back instead of using the back to hit the ball, that's called a bunt, okay? It can be do, it can be done for a lot of reasons, usually strategics. Okay, it's usually used in tighter games. You're not gonna do a bunch if the if the level of the teams are like way, way um, different if you're on the winning team. If you're winning by 10 runs and then you do a bunch, everybody's gonna say fuck off. Okay? It's usually done if like this goes really close, that run is really important, you really want to push the runner and then like one more base and then so that it's not a false run and then the next guy comes and get him home and then you get that one single crucial run. So that's usually the most common thing when it's used, okay? So that's a bunt. Why, am I, why is it distinct from a hit? Is that you do not get a protection on the first strike if you're doing a bunt. Because otherwise, if I'm a guy who's not afraid to die and I have a very good eyes, I just put the bat here, the pitcher keep pitching, I just foul, foul all the balls away and then the pitcher's gonna get exhausted. So I just put my bat at the angle, he pitches, I foul it, foul it, foul it, foul it, I can make the pitcher pitch a hundred strike just for me. Okay? So if you're doing a bunt, you do not get a protection on the third strike. A bunt foul on a third strike is an out. It's a strikeout. It's not exactly a strikeout, but it's equivalent to a strikeout. Okay? It's actually not listed as a strikeout on the score sheet or whatever, it's treated as a strikeout. Okay, you do not get better protection on a bunt foul on a first strike. I think that's everything you need to know to understand. Yeah, it's okay, I'm finished anyway. So unfortunately I have to work tomorrow so I have no review guys on your third.